Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. It's interesting to be standing here talking about faith and love on such an important day for the ones who raised us. My mother has always been the one who got the family out the door and into this room. My, bro my brother, my father, and I may just as well have eaten donuts and watched Sports Center most Sundays. She's the one who advocated I should go to REACH, our youth group's one week mission trip to Alabama. She's the one who always reminded me about my faith and so often goes without recognition. So we made a day for moms like her, ensuring we wouldn't forget. To all the mothers out there, thank you. My faith has been an enjoyable experience. I can think of many happy times where I've thought, wow, God was looking out for me on that one, or God has given me so many blessings, I should be more appreciative. There have been times when I've been awestruck by the wonders of this earth and thought to myself, only God could know the beauty and majesty of what he was creating. I've experienced God in places I never thought I would, mainly on our REACH trip last summer. Down there in Alabama, the June of last summer, I had mixed feelings about a week of community service. It was the third week of summer, my friends are all back from boarding school and hanging out with me again. My favorite sport, golf, is kicking back into full gear. And most importantly, the US Open Sunday round and NBA Finals were on. It was everything I love about summer. But instead, I'm in a rural area of Alabama, retiling the floors of a trailer home. I was working with five other kids, none of whom were from Kentucky, on helping this elderly woman fix up her house. The proprietor was a very southern lady named Shelley, with a thick accent, who was very, I thought, overly strict with her kids. In every aspect of her nature I could deduce, she was bitter and unwelcoming. I began to dread the week even more but I think we're all smart enough to take an educated guess on what happens next in the story. By the end of the week, my perspective had changed significantly. We had accomplished quite a lot for the woman. A new kitchen floor, fresh paint on the outside and inside of the house, and a new back porch. She was starting to show her appreciation. It was the last day and the task was finished, so we were saying our goodbyes when Shelley started to cry. To me, this was similar to when the Grinch's heart exponentially grows as he's about to throw the presents away. I did not think this woman was capable of tears. She was a lifelong construction worker, apparently looking after four grandchildren while her daughter worked. This woman was hardened by a rough life, yet here she is giving me a hug through tears because I built a meager back porch and redid a kitchen floor the size of my bedroom. This is the moment when I've thought I've truly been closest to God, because God is unconditional love, and I'm not putting myself on that plane but what my youth group did there collectively was somewhere close to unconditional love. Making a visible impact on someone's life is the most rewarding feeling there can be. And if you take anything away from my story today, just remember that. Now for me, college is on the doorstep. In 107 days, I move in, but who's counting? I travel 700 miles away, leave everything and everyone I've ever known and loved, and I start a new life. It's a bit daunting when you put it into those terms, but I'm enthusiastic, anxious, and ready for this fresh start. I know there will be lonely times. I'll miss my family, my friends, and the comforting familiarity of this quaint town. But when there's something, there's something I can always carry with me no matter where I go, my faith. Whenever I get down in the dumps, I can always count on the unconditional love that God has for me. In fact, the only thing I'm sure about college right now is that I won't be able to sleep easily the first night. It's something that I've often thought about, the tossing and the turning, the creeping thoughts, the longing for sleep, but the inability to make it so. So I've devised a game plan for when that first night comes. I'm going to thank God for everything I have, to ask for forgiveness, and I'm going to share my feelings until I feel ready to go to bed. Maybe that's something we could all do whenever we feel like no one is listening. I am confident my college experience and my life in general will be one with tremendous highs and very, very low lows. The only challenge for me, and I believe the challenge for us all, will be to talk to God through the sleepless nights and the nights where everything is going just right. <laughs>